Hi, I'm Melody, and my biggest dream in high school was to go to an Ivy League. But from the title of this video, <laughs> you probably already guessed it. Yep, I applied for every single Ivy League in high school, and yes, I got rejected from all eight of them. <sighs> but dreams can come true. I just graduated with an undergrad Ivy League degree, so I really wanted to make this video to share my story on how I did it, so hopefully it can help anybody else who had the same dream that I did when I was in high school. So I want to start off by telling you a little bit about myself. I did a five-year dual degree program where I got a BA in engineering and music from Scripps and a BS in applied math from Columbia Engineering. I'm an incoming product manager at a tech company, but before I started my job, I wanted to do some self-reflecting on the past few years. I also wanted to say this is actually my first time vlogging, so I am a little bit nervous. I also always wanted to create a YouTube channel, but the past few years were really busy getting to where I am now. But now that I've graduated, I finally have the time to sit down and reflect. So I just really wanted my first vlog to be about my journey to getting an Ivy League degree because, oh my God, it was really a lot. Now that I'm five years out of high school, my perspective on a lot of things have really changed a lot. And I really do think there are a lot of things that high school me really needed to hear. So flashback to five years ago. On Ivy Day, high school me was sobbing. Back then, getting into an Ivy League was my biggest dream. I did as many extracurriculars as possible. I maintained my GPA. I took as many AP classes as I could, but getting into an Ivy League is just really hard. The acceptance rates are as low as 3%, and I just really wanna go back to high school me give her a hug and say, Melody, it's okay that you didn't get in. It's really not the end of the world. And I had a lot of friends who didn't get in either, but they still ended up being really happy in the colleges they ended up in. But there are always other opportunities to make this happen. Just because you got rejected, it doesn't mean you can't get in forever. There are a lot of different pathways. I did a more unconventional transferring route that I think a lot of people don't even know about. I did a combined plan dual degree program called 3-2 where you spend your first three years at a liberal arts college and your last two years at an engineering institution. Unlike a regular transferring path through 3-2, you end up with two degrees. It's a dual degree Bay MBS. Columbia, Caltech, Dartmouth, USC, and Harvey Mudd and more have a 3-2 program. But for this video, I'm going to focus more on Columbia because that's what I ended up doing. If you want a good shot at getting into the 3-2 program for Columbia, there are a couple steps to this process. Number one, you should first check if your school is an affiliated school. The reason I say this is students of affiliated schools don't apply through the regular transfer process. They have a separate 3-2 application. And from the website, applicants who attend an affiliate institution will be prioritized in the admissions process. Here's a list of affiliated schools of Columbia. I can't fit the entire list in this video so I also attached a link in the video description. If you're watching this now and you're in high school and you think you might be interested in this program, you should check out the affiliate colleges on the list. If you're already in college but you don't attend an affiliate school but you might be interested in this program, the website says students of non-affiliate colleges can still apply but it'll be in a different process. If your college is an affiliated school, your school should also have a 3-2 advisor who will help you and keep and ensure you're on track. Number two, choose a major you want to major in at Columbia Engineering. There's a wide variety of STEM majors you can choose from. I chose applied math personally. There's electrical engineering, computer science. I attached a full list in the description. Note that once you choose a major to study at Columbia, you must stick with it. Like, I, I'm actually not kidding. You're not allowed to change majors once you're at Columbia. So make sure you really want to major in it. Number three, complete prerequisite courses. There's a list of prereq courses that regardless of major, everybody has to take and specific ones for the major that you want to pursue at Columbia. You have to complete all of these prereq courses at your home institution within three years. Students usually major in physics or math at their home institution because a lot of these prereqs are physics and math classes, but some liberal art colleges might have specific rules on what you're allowed to major in. 
For example, at Scripps, we were only allowed to major in engineering, and at Claremont McKenna, students have to major in economics while completing all the prereq courses. Number four, maintain your grades, especially if they are prereq courses. Columbia highly recommends an overall GPA of at least a 3.3, a minimum pre-engineering GPA of a 3.3, which includes all the science and math prereqs, and a minimum grade of a 3.0 must be obtained on the first attempt in all science and math prereq coursework. Number five, maintain good relationships with your faculty. You're going to need three recommendation letters, one from your 3-2 advisor, one from a math prof, and one from a science prof. So make sure you maintain good relationships with your profs and advisor. Number six, apply through the 3-2 portal. You made it. When I applied, there were two short answer questions I had to answer. The questions were, please tell us what attracts you to the combined man program at Columbia, and please tell us what attracts you to the specific engineering major in which you are applying. For my essays regarding what attracted me to the combined plan program, I talked about how this program felt like a second chance to pursue STEM. I didn't come into college as a STEM major, I'll get more into this later. And for the essay question that asked about what attracted me to the specific engineering major, I talked about my interest in quantum computing and how I wanted to build up my mathematical foundation to pursue physics. Because at the time I applied for Columbia, I was thinking about going to physics grad school. But that didn't happen, as you can see, because I'm going to be a product manager in tech. And number seven, you made it to the finish line. You just wait and you'll get your results around May. So let's summarize the steps really quickly. Number one, check if your liberal arts school is an affiliated school. I attached a link in the description. Even if your school is an affiliated one, you can still apply for 3-2. Number two, choose a major you want to pursue at Columbia. Number three, complete prereq courses. Number four, maintain your grades, especially if they are prereq courses. Number five, maintain good relationships with faculty. Number six, apply through the 3-2 application portal. Number seven, you made it to the finish line, so wait, and you'll get your admission results around May. So these are all the steps. If you complete all the prereqs, maintain your grades, you have a really good shot of getting into Columbia Engineering. When I applied, my stats were an overall GPA of 3.81. I got at least a solid B in all my pre-engineering courses on my first try, and my pre-engineering GPA was a 3.5. For me personally, the hardest part was actually getting at least a solid B in all the pre-engineering courses. I think getting a B on your first try for some people might sound really easy, but personally for me, <laughs> I thought it was so hard. Like, I legitimately didn't even know if I would pass a class sometime. So, I didn't come into college thinking I would pursue STEM. I always thought I would go into business, so I didn't take any AP science courses like physics or chemistry in high school. The first few years in college were, oh, so rough because I had to learn how to study STEM. I still remember getting a D on my first college physics exam and feeling really, really discouraged because everybody around me got a hundred on that exam. And all of them told me they had already learned this in high school, but I was really determined. I really didn't want one exam to define my future. So I pushed myself so hard. I studied four hours every day after that exam. I read the textbook. I literally did every single problem in that textbook and I was also really fortunate because my classmates were super sweet, they helped me a lot. Professors at liberal art colleges are also super nice during office hours and by the time I got to my second year in college, when I took modern physics, it was definitely way easier to grasp all the material from the foundation that I worked on building my first year. And at the time, I still had a lot of imposter syndrome in STEM because I never considered myself a STEM person at all, but it was really obvious that I had improved because when people were asking me questions and I was suddenly able to help them, it was really a big boost in self-confidence. And thinking back at it now, I think this was really a lesson for me that just because you started at something later than others, it doesn't mean it's impossible to do. I think the biggest key takeaway for me really is Rejection is not the end of the world. It's a redirection. I know this sounds really cliche and I understand getting rejected from your dream school can feel horrible. Believe me, oh, I, I, I really get it. But if it's something you really want, you really should go look for the opportunities and do everything in your power to achieve them. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. After finishing this program, I felt really glad I didn't get into any IVs in the beginning because I wouldn't have been able to meet the people that I did, experience the things that I did, and these past few years have really helped me grow as a person. And you're interested in both a liberal arts and engineering education? I really recommend this experience. And if you're a high school student right now and you're interested in this, you should take more physics courses during high school so you won't have to suffer as much as I did. <laughs> 
I'm gonna make another video more on my actual 3-2 experience between Scripps and Columbia, but for now, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. If you have any additional questions, please leave them in the comment section below, and please subscribe if you want to hear more about my experiences. My channel is going to talk about self-reflections of the past few years in college, when I was finding internships, post-grad traveling, and then once I start my job, I just really want to document my life. Anyways, thank you so, 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 so much for watching to the end. See you next time!